So nothing is a nice story. It's a little bit longer than our others, but I thought it was well worth it because it's really, really nice story. Partway through, you may think, oh dear, what's going to happen? But you know, things always work out best in the end, don't they? Oh, I think we've got Tyler here as well. I think so. Are we ready then? Okay, here we go with nothing. Some lovely pictures too, so I'll be sure to show you. Oh dearie me, can you hear that? Mm-mm. Our doggies. I hope they don't bark too much. Here we go. The little thing in the attic at number 47 had forgotten all about daylight. It had been squashed in the dark for so long that it could remember very little of anything. Stuck beneath years of junk, it could not recall how it felt to stand up or to stretch out its arms. So long had it been there, even its own name was lost. I wonder who I am, it thought, but it could not remember. Can you see him peeking out down here under all that junk up in the attic? The day came when the family that lived at number 47 were to move. All day long the little thing listened to thuds and thumps and the sound of tramping feet in the house below until at last the attic door was flung open. Large hands began to stuff cardboard boxes full of junk. The little thing felt the weight on top of it gradually lighten and suddenly the glare of a torch stung its eyes. What have we got here? said a voice. Oh, it's nothing, said another. Let the new people get rid of it. The torch was switched off. The boxes were carried out and moments later, somewhere down below, the front door slammed shut. Number 47 was empty. So that's my name, thought the little thing. Nothing. There he is, being left up oh, in the attic. For the first time in a very long time, nothing sat up. He looked around him at the cobwebs and shafts of dusty moonlight. Then, in the quiet, he heard the patter of feet and a mouse came running towards him. New people always try to get rid of you, it said, without introducing itself. It looked at him. Seen you under the rug. What are you? Nothing, replied nothing. Well, nothing or not, you can't stay here. Not with new people coming, said the mouse. It hurried off. Nothing struggled to its feet. On unsteady legs, he followed the dusty paw prints. The mouse stopped by a moonlit gap under the eaves. Through there, it said, good luck. With a wriggle of its tail, it disappeared under the floorboards. I used to have a tail, thought nothing suddenly. He felt sure of it. Do you see where he's going to have to crawl out of? Poor nothing. How do you think you would feel if you had been squashed in the dark for years and years and then you squeezed through a tiny hole to find yourself under the big starry sky? Well, there are no words for that kind of feeling, so I won't try to tell you how nothing felt, except to say that he sat on the roof staring up at the moon and the stars for a very long time. Oh, wow! How amazing he must have thought it looked. He was still staring upwards as he made his way along the gutter, which is why he fell straight down the drain pipe. 
nothing rolled into the garden and sat up. What on earth are you? said a voice. The fox, for that it is what it was, left the dustbin and trotted towards him. I'm nothing, said nothing. The fox sniffed at him. Its whiskers quivered, its ears pricked up. I used to have ears and whiskers, thought nothing suddenly. He was sure of it. The fox spoke again. Nothing, it said disdainfully. Nothing worth eating, that's for sure. And it trotted away. Nothing wandered into the garden and came across a lily pond. There, a frog sat gently croaking. As nothing approached, it plopped into the water. And with a kick of its stripy legs, it disappeared from view. I used to have stripes, thought nothing. I'm sure I did. The ripples cleared and nothing found himself staring at his own reflection. It was odd. It was ugly. What are you? It said to nothing sadly. A tear rolled and splashed onto the surface of the pond. The ugly face disappeared amongst the ripples. What are you? Repeated nothing. Oh, there he is, looking at himself. Hi Jenny and the girls, hope you're all well. I'm a cat, said a loud voice. Who's asking? Look. Oh. <laughs> a big lolloping tabby cat tumbled out from behind a bush and grinned at nothing. Nothing opened his mouth to explain that he'd been talking to himself and that he did not know what he was and that he was lost and that he had just been sniffed by a horrible fox and that he was feeling very miserable. But instead, he found himself shuddering, shaking as great, uncontrollable sobs quivered up his little raggedy body and sat him on the ground. I don't know who I am, he howled. I don't know who I am. The cat licked him full in the face. After a while, nothing stopped crying. The cat lay down beside him. Between <laughs> nothing's loud sniffs, it told him all about itself, how its name was Toby and how it came from a long line of Tobies. I live in the house, it said. At least I used to. We moved round the corner today. They think I'm lost, but it's all the same to me, number 47, number 97. What's the difference? It's all my patch. Do you want to see? Nothing. <laughs> sniffed once more and nodded. I think these are going to become good friends. Do you? Of course you do, said the cat. It picked up nothing and sprang onto the garden wall. Nothing had never ridden through the night in a cat's mouth before. It whisked him up through the branches of a tree and out onto the rooftops where they sped along with the moon, racing them behind the chimney pots. I'm taking you the long way round, panted the cat. It's more fun. All the while, joggling along inside nothing's head, there was a thought trying to get out. It felt like an important thought. It had something to do with the cat. Oh, look. They're having lots of fun jumping across the rooftops, aren't they? The cat jumped the fence at number 97 and trotted in through the back door. He found an old man dozing in a chair surrounded by unpacked boxes. That's Grandpa, whispered the cat to nothing and dropped him 
on the old man's lap. So there you are, said Grandpa, waking up. What have you brought me this time? He put on his glasses and looked at nothing. Good heavens! Look everyone, look at what Toby's found. Nothing looked up at Grandpa and saw a face he knew. The important thought inside his head popped open like a jack-in-the-box. Look. The family gathered round to look. What is it, Grandpa? said the children. But Grandpa was busy rummaging among the cardboard boxes. I know it's here somewhere, he said. Ah, there it is. He pulled out an old photograph and opened the album, turned the pages until he came to a fading photograph of a baby. That's me, he said. And that's Toby's great, 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 great grandfather. And this, he said, tapping the photograph and tickling nothing's tummy with his forefinger. This is little Toby. Can you see everybody? Can you see the baby? Toby's great, 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 great grandfather. And look! <gasps> little Toby. At last, nothing remembered who he was. Though he had no ears, nor whiskers, nor tail, and no stripes, he was for certain a little cloth tabby cat whose name was not nothing but little Toby. And this, with the help of a good wash, some scraps of material, a needle and some thread, is how he became little Toby once more. <gasps> Look everybody! Wow! When the new baby arrived, little Toby was handed back to Grandpa, who took him carefully in the cot. And straight away, the new baby began to chew on his ear. Which, if it had been your ear, would probably have hurt a little. But since it belonged to a little cloth cat, did not hurt in the slightest. Oh, the end. So, how beautiful an ending to that story. So I said, I hoped you had a little cuddly with you tonight to snuggle on down with. And that was why, because the end of that story is so beautiful, isn't it? Poor little nothing, lo lost up in the attic, was found. So, good night everybody. Have a wonderful night's sleep. And I'll see you all for a lovely bedtime story on Wednesday. Same time, seven o'clock. Okay, see you all soon. To all those little yogis that were listening. <laughs>